Hello everyone. In this video we present our pictorial titled Parallels, Tangents, and Loops, Reflections on the Through Part of RTD. Design and RTD are generative practices. This means that they're likely to produce knowledges or theories that are embedded in the artifacts produced. And those knowledges and theories are inherently provisional, contingent, and aspirational. A core challenge in recent years has been to find ways to articulate how knowledge produced via RTD is valid or reliable while remaining true to the approach, which is often open and messy. Representations such as these diagrams aim to show a clear chain of reasoning that leads to a final artifact. However, this clarity reduces the plurality of processes to a singular omnidirectional series of steps which lead to straightforward results or answers. Tim Ingold says, in Western societies, straight lines are ubiquitous. We see them everywhere even when they don't exist. In response, this work aims to contribute by showing that sometimes this chain is more of a mesh of lines. And in those cases, we see the artifacts of RTD emerge within and throughout the mesh instead of appearing at the endpoints of this chain. While efforts to find appropriate ways of disseminating the results of RTD are crucial for the growth of the field, in this pictorial, we attend to the messiness of the research and design process. If RTD is inherently about design as a mode of inquiry, what can we learn by being more open about the meandering, at times confusing, and ambiguous exploration within the process? To address this question, we point our gaze towards a recent project from our design research studio. This project foregrounded data's lively, local, and entangled encounters with home dwellers. We work through various methods in parallel, first-person experiments with our own data, a precedent study around data physicalization, home tours with 10 people, um, including bespoke card game and Mad Libs, as well as speculative concepts to continue to imagine with participants. What you see here is a timeline of those activities represented via various types of line. To arrive to this series of 12 lines that describe our RTD process, we embarked on a reflexive analysis and took a deeper look at each activity's trajectory. We iterated on different word options and played with metaphors and rhetoric. We used images to explore new ideas and play with levels of, of abstraction and fidelity. We used sketches, diagrams, and conversations to bring clarity and depth to how each activity took place and help us find consensus. So in the pictorial, we present each line with an example from our research process. But for this presentation, we're gonna focus on just two examples, loops and tangents. Tangents represent lines of inquiry which started in parallel, but at some point started to veer off. In these cases, the line didn't, end dead, didn't dead end or taper. They wound up going somewhere interesting, but just tangentially related, so maybe not all that useful. In the case of loops, we found that lines started to curve and bend away from its original direction, but then dramatically loops around and reorients itself as a parallel to the original trajectory. So taking a closer look at tangents, after our home tours, we created a set of probes for two of our 10 participants. Each set included three physical objects individually designed and crafted to live in their homes as imaginary sensors with imaginary data. We asked participants to record and upload short videos explaining how, in their imagination, these sensors would work in their home and what data they would produce. We spent a lot of time imagining and crafting these probes and we were really excited about the video format. However, one participant, Lucy, was very enthusiastic, but the other never finished their videos. And Lucy's videos were indeed really fun and playful, but they lacked the focus on data that we wanted. This line on its own was really interesting, but it didn't actually mesh with the rest of the lines in our inquiry, which were much more about data than sensors or videos. Now to take a closer look at loops, we refer to our survey of data physicalization during our project. One branch of the project was to imagine home IoT data as something more tactile, more material and lively than data represented in dashboards or graphs. We gathered examples of data physicalization, but once we had pinned them all up to the wall, we saw them as fairly still prescriptive. Um, they represented limited sets of data and lacked an element of whimsy that was integral to our group's ethos. This caused friction, 
and we paused for a few weeks and worked on other things, but we wanted to push through. We wanted to see if there was a way to produce a productive critique of these works that could align with our findings. We looked back at the examples and tried to identify exactly what their goal or motivations were. We found reflection and self-improvement as central goals. This was in contrast to the more diverse ways we had started to understand data from our own findings. Something that was less in the foreground, more lively and less authoritative. By looping back within our process, we had a chance to address the friction and enhance our findings. In the next slides, we will do a brief overview of the other traces we present in the pictorial. Here we see lines and blurs. Lines illustrate periods where we felt direction and clarity in the upcoming steps, while blurs offered an elusive sense that things were indeed moving along, but their success or benefit felt incommunicable or at times inexplicable. All of the lines we pursued have intricate yet traceable paths in and throughout the larger mesh of lines in the project. However, there are instances where a line quickly dead ends instead of relating to the rest of the mesh. While some dead ends remain dead, others, the poorest dead ends, allow for things to remain, to linger, and to resonate later into the process. Parallels arose when we were pursuing many different avenues of an investigation at once, occasionally leading to really generative crossings. In contrast, perpendiculars result when one line's influence causes friction, disruption, or upheaval. Zigs and zags represent elements of surprise in our process. While zigs yielded unexpectedly useful results, zags were more common and represent moments when we were lulled into believing that a line of inquiry was on a fast track to somewhere really exciting, only to realize that our efforts were spent moving in the opposite direction. Weaving and expanding are lines that occurred in our writing process. Weaving represents moments of pulling together all of our threads, data, themes, theory, critique, sketches, to form the texture of our narrative. And expanding occurred when we complicated that narrative by adding participants' reactions to our findings. The illustrations that you see, that you saw today, are not meant to be decorative or mere accompaniments to the text. The lines themselves are the ways by which we were able to make sense of our own process. In some cases, drawing the lines felt like a way to look back at those moments in the process where we managed to pause for reflection and attend to them with more care and thoroughness. But in other cases, we needed the iterative and embodied act of drawing, of evaluating visually, and of discussing to bring the activity into focus and to understand and define its trajectory. For instance, when we were drawing the loop, we finalized two variations. To choose, we asked ourselves which one best represented the process of realigning our work on data physicalization. We opted for the option on the right, as it shows a continuity in directionality before and after the loop, but also acknowledges that it slightly reoriented the line. We chose to zoom in as a strategy to step away from the teleological relationships of question to answer or action to outcome, which require a straightening of these lines. Through this close reading of the process, we found a more honest and messy way of reporting on the rigor of our work by understanding it as a tapestry or parliament of lines. Reporting on RTD processes and findings inevitably means choosing what to share and what will remain a private part of the process. But instead of agonizing over what isn't told, it might be more relevant to acknowledge how each line, as crisp or as blurry as it is, might play a role in the overall process. So in conclusion, the lines we draw stem from our own RTD process. However, we hope that their visual qualities, their simplicity, directionality, and names will resonate with other practitioners and inspire them to draw their own lines throughout their projects in moments of pause throughout the project as well as with hindsight. We wonder what would a corner, a funnel, a fading line, or a rooted line mean, and what would that represent? We have illustrated one way of bringing into focus a process which is and should remain squishy, murky, messy, and uncontained, but it benefits from better communication, better transparency, and better documentation. 
Thank you.